Welcome back to the Weeb Lounge. The anime we're covering today is a horror, mystery, suspense, blood-soaked, umbrella-wielding massacre of doom. It's another, not another one, but another. It'll make a little bit more sense once we get into it. Now, horror anime is not normally my thing, because when you watch a horror, there's a little bit of a suspension of disbelief, right? And when you're watching an anime, it kind of adds another tick up on that suspension of disbelief. So I, I personally have never really gotten into them. But that doesn't mean other people can't, and it doesn't mean you can't find some that are absolutely awesome like another. First character, main character, Koichi Sakakibara. Uh, basically, this is a transfer student comes into this school, attends class 3-3, and he's kind of a friendly guy. You know, he's really overly curious, maybe to his own detriment, but he's a friendly, nice guy. Just came back, and, you know, he was just in the hospital previously from an injury, so he had to come back and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, he shows up in class, and everything seems pretty much normal, except he kind of notices this girl off in the corner, right? She's kind of just doing whatever she wants. Nobody's really paying attention to what she's doing. In fact, nobody's acknowledging her at all. Oddly. Now, it's really weird because, you know, it's to such an extreme degree that nobody in the classroom acknowledges her existence. She could walk right up to, like, another classmate, smack him in the head or something, or pick up their paper and start crumpling it up and being all mean and stuff, and they won't pay her any attention at all. That's how insane it is. So, Koichi starts thinking, this might be a ghost. Nobody else sees her or acknowledges her existence except for him. Well, that's not the case. The quote-unquote ghost is actually Mei Misaki. Mei Misaki is kind of an emo girl. Her, She's a little emotionless, even though she can be quite friendly, quite childish at times. She's had a little bit of trauma in her past, including a whole bunch of family issues. She apparently had a twin sister that died. And the first thing, of course, you notice about her is the patch on her eye. Well, when she was like four or five years old, she got really sick and something happened to her eye. She lost an eye. And in its place is a doll's eye, a glass eye. Really, really cool looking, but it's a different color. So you have like red eye, green eye or something like that, right? She's a little embarrassed about it, so she just decides to cover it up, even though it does look pretty awesome. So... That's just kind of her. She is a little bit more, I, I want to say goth, but it's not really goth. A little bit of a creepiness factor to it, right? She's not trying to play the delusions of grandeur type thing. She's got the patch for a reason. But anyways, why is everybody ignoring her, okay? It comes down to the main thing that this whole anime is about. If anything, this could be the main character of the anime, and that is the curse itself. The big, crazy curse that I actually really like. It, it has rules to follow. It has certain situations to get in and or out of. It's it's complex. It, it's not like, you know, step on a crack, break your mother's back. You know, it's not something simple, stupid like that. It's an actual rule. It's an actual law. All right, let, let, let's, let's get into this curse, okay? Why is everybody ignoring her? Why is everybody pretending that she doesn't even exist or whatever, at least in the classroom? Well, apparently back in 1972, and this anime apparently takes place in the late 90s, okay? So back in 1972, Class 3-3 attended this guy, Misaki. And this guy, he was incredibly well-liked, incredibly well-educated, super at athletics, Ultra, ultra friendly. The, the kind of guy that you, you just don't see these kind of people, okay? Everyone in the school loves this guy. I don't, I don't mean they just like him. Everybody loves him. The students, the teachers, the faculty, the family members, the family members of other students' family members. It's, he is just absolutely positively adored, and they think the world of him, he's the greatest person ever existed, right? That's the level of magnitude this guy has, the charisma this guy has. Well, in 72, he died. Now, that came to a crashing halt, right? But the thing is that death 
scarred pretty much that whole town at this point, especially all the schools, faculty, and such, to such a degree that nobody could accept it. Nobody. They could not accept his death. It got to such an insane level that the teachers, the students, everybody, they pretended as if he was still in the class. They pretended that he graduated with everybody. Nobody acknowledged the guy was dead. They just went on their normal life acting as if he's there. Uh, presumably even like talking to him. It's, be, it's like mass hysteria on a emotionally dead scale. Okay, so it goes on for the whole year. They get to the end, and of course you have the traditional class photo, right? They take the photo, they print it out or develop it, you know, back in the 70s, whatever the heck they did. They ran it underwater or whatever the heck it was. And lo and behold, the guy, the dead guy, is in the picture. That's a little creepy, ain't it? Okay, so this dead guy is in the picture, and everybody's kind of creeped out and blah, blah, blah. But let's go to the next year, April of next year. April of like 73. People start dying left and right. Students from class 33, faculty members, uh, family of students in class 33, all anything connected more or less directly with class 33. So you got all the students, all the family of the students, the faculty, pretty much the whole faculty of the whole school, including their family. If you're in this circle, and it's a really big circle, you're prone to the curse and prone to being dead at random for whatever the hell reason. That's essentially the curse. They, they essentially couldn't let Misaki's soul rest. And Misaki's soul is, supposedly, now in this classroom causing havoc to the others, okay? So what do they do? Life goes on, and they try to find a way to get around this curse or whatever. They, they try to cancel Class 3-3. They try to just, Class 3-3 doesn't exist anymore. We're having classes in these other areas, and the curse ends up, like, following to another class that, you know, there would have to be a Class 3-3, so whatever Class 3-3 it would be called now is just now cursed and people die. <laughs> so they started experimenting, trying to figure out how to avoid this curse, well, one way to avoid the curse is leave town. Once you get out of the city limits, basically, you're, you're okay. Assuming you get out alive, especially while the curse is active. The curse, the curse starts in April and ends at the school year when everybody graduates, during graduation. That's the duration. So, yeah, if you can get out of town alive or whatever, you're safe. Curse won't get you. But it's not so simple. Not everybody's just simply going to move out of town. I know damn well I would. So... They come up with this idea that, okay, in that classroom, let's say there was 30 seats, okay? There were 30 actual students in there. Well, they were pretending that he, this guy was still alive, so in, in a way there was a 31st seat that was empty. So they decide to take this action where they p randomly pick a student or a volunteer, and they actually get all passing grades and everything, I guess, and they don't really have to do anything or interact with anyone. They just get their grade. And they are the extra. Okay, so if there are 30 students in the class, technically they are in the class, but they are the 31st student. Everybody ignores her as if she does not exist, he or she. And this seems to work. This odd circumstance seems to work. And of course, May is the subject of this time around. She's, you know, the other one, the one that nobody acknowledges. So they do this for like three years or something. Seems to work, but in all actuality, Things do happen. People have died, but I think it's like one per year or something like that. Essentially, they kind of chalk those, uh, those deaths up to just circumstance, happenstance, unrelated to the curse. Because for one, it's only one death, and when you take the magnitude of people that is all connected to this classroom, there's a good chance that somebody's going to wind up dead regardless of a curse or not, right? So that's how they kind of write it off. Turns out, not the case. It doesn't work. So, of course, people start dying. And that's where this infamous umbrella thing happens. Oh, it's, it's horrid. It's absolutely horrid. Poor girl's like running away, scared, scared to death, going downstairs. She has an, her umbrella with her. 
And right when she gets before, when she's at the last set of stairs, she trips and falls. The umbrella goes tumbling in front of her as she's falling. The umbrella, the base hits the ground. It's pointing up as her body does this. <laughs> Impales herself and she dies. It's, it's like, how can you believe that would happen? And oh my God, it happened. It's nasty. But and that's not the only nasty death in this whole thing. There's people dying all over the place. Okay, quick synopsis of what is actually going on here. There's a dead person in the classroom. Yes, there is a dead person in the classroom. Every single year, somebody who died the previous year or something around those lines will actually show up to class. They're dead. They're dead. They're gone. Everybody knows they're dead. Every, whatever. And they just show up to class. But the thing is, when they show up to class, it's like everyone's memory is wiped. Okay? Nobody remembers this person dying. Everybody thinks it's just completely normal. Even documents and media and everything, it's all wiped clean. Some mysterious force is controlling this. So now you have a dead person who shows up in the class. Nobody knows the guy is dead. The person who shows up that's dead does not know that they are dead. Nobody knows. And this is the guy that basically hauls the curse with them. This is the guy or girl. It can be any of the students. It could be any of the faculty members. It could be one of the family. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the classroom as far as I know. Just somebody there. So, what do they got to do? What do they got to do? The true way to break the curse, at least for that year, is to find out who the dead person is and kill them. Again, kind of. You do that, it breaks the curse for that year. It's not necessarily a permanent ending, right? You solve it for a year and now you have the next year to deal with. I would not attend this school if, if you paid me. I mean, well, if I was in a different class, I would, because the other classes aren't subject to it. So, yeah, you can pay me to go to the class as long as it's not class 3-3. If it's class 3-3, fuck you. Uh-uh. Nope. With that, <laughs> like, subscribe, hit that notification button. This is one of those horror flicks that you have to watch. The story is awesome. The characters are awesome. The curse itself is awesome, and especially how they implement it and all the discovery and suspense that goes along with it, they, especially all the investigating, how they're, they're wrong in these sense, how they're right in this sense. I could go on for quite a while now. But anyways, that's another. It's another anime you should watch. See you in the next video.